Good evening, Charleston. How are you tonight? All right, let's roll. Jenny, thank you for such a kind introduction. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about surf culture tonight, but I want to start by just pointing out how easy our space is to overlook on Spring Street. But damn it if we don't have the best address, right? All right, 69 Spring, come check it out. But tonight we're going to talk a little bit about why we surfers sometimes damage relationships, drop appointments, totally flake out on life to venture out and find waves, especially in a place like Charleston with small waves. We still love them. Um, why is it that uh, surf culture is so uh, prevalent within media and culture in general? We're going to talk about the artistry behind wave riding. This gentleman on the screen uh, is who I would be married to if I were not married to my beautiful wife, Sarah. This is Mr. Alex Nost, in my opinion, the greatest surfer that's ever lived. Um, and that look, that's the stoke. That's what we're all chasing. One simple wave is all it takes to get dialed in and helplessly, hopelessly addicted. It's like, okay, this is a perfect example of the extremes that we surfers will go through. Snow-covered beaches are no problem. The dude's eye is on the wave, not what's right in front of him. And so it's a good time. Thank God for quality wetsuits these days that keep us warm. It's always summertime inside your wetsuit. <laughs> Early 1900s, I, a huge shout out to Alexander Hume Ford, who was originally from South Carolina, founded the, uh, the, the Waikiki Beach Club, uh, actually the Outrigger Canoe Club, and he introduced a gentleman by the name of Jack London to surfing, and Jack London's 1911 essay on Hawaiian wave riding saved surfing from missionaries trying to abolish it as a hedonistic sport. We're going to fast forward into 1960. Mickey Dora the cat, the ultimate anti-hero of surfing, the angry young man dominating Malibu. He dares you to get on his wave, or he might kick his board at you. And notice the beautiful body posture, graces in the fingertips, the poise, He's got perfect trim on the wave. Fast forward into the late 90s, Joel Tudor, I dare say the king, leading the longboard renaissance within surf culture. Notice similar body postures as the previous slide. And uh, he's in perfect trim on the wave in a classic hang five position, five toes over the nose there. The aesthetics of surfing are pretty undeniable. Water play. Mr. Phil Edwards, uh, one of my heroes, Classic wave rider from the 60s. This was the first person to ever ride the Bonsai Pipeline on the north shore of Oahu. And right now, uh, the Pipe Masters contest is going on. And for those of you in the know, rumor has it Slater's going to retire and announce it afterwards. Spoiler alert. Uh, but again, notice the classic body posture, again, of my future husband, Mr. Alex Nose. Um, very similar you know, posture. I love you, Alex. We'll talk later. Um, but again, uh, the light play on the water, the aesthetics, not just of his crazy wetsuit and the funky board design, but the, the artistry behind his movements in the water take a tremendous amount of skill, dedication, timing, and precision. And so before we get in the, or after <clears throat> concluding the artistry of wave riding, there's a lot of forethought that goes into board design. There's a lot of hydrodynamic theory that's tempered by personal experience in the water. The best surfboard makers are usually the best surfers. When you can find that combination, as we have in Mr. Richard Prowse here in Charleston, he produces our phenomenal shop model we call the Slayer. It's the ultimate all-terrain vehicle for Charleston. A little bit of belly, tip to tail. It's a gentle 50-50 pinch rail. A little V in the tail, ultimate maneuverability in our peaky, quick, conditions that we experience here. That's a little view inside his shaping bay where the magic happens. Again, a cross section of rail design. So here's where I geek out even more. It, it's, there's a lot of precision in designing the craft that ultimately leads to artistic expression in the water. Again, that expression tempered by time, skill, dropped commitments, being late to work, et cetera, et cetera. So don't depend on surfers for anything during hurricane season. That's me, um, just outside of our, our shop on Spring Street, checking out the finished product. We've gone through the design phase into the finished craft. This one's made by a gentleman named John Wesley, who you'll see in the next slide. Really young guy out of Dana Point, California, producing a phenomenal craft. There he is on the left. And Mr. Evan Daly uh, on the right, who works for a company called Gato Heroi. So you're seeing some finished product there. Functional art pieces. These gentlemen, their skill in the shaping bay is definitely rivaled by their skill in the water. And that's the combination we look for in partners for our shop is people that represent the sport well. And again, just to tap into 
classic surf culture. This is San Onofre State Park, circa 1960 in San Clemente, California. If you took a snapshot this afternoon, it would look pretty much identical. Um, that's just a, and there are so many creative endeavors that spawn from surf culture, be it music, crazy literature, art. Uh, locally, Chris Dixon's a phenomenal writer. It's also a well-attuned surfer. Uh, I think the ultimate uh, surfer's dream is to live within an easy bicycle ride of the beach. Just a perfect example of that West Coast cool imagery that's so prevalent within, within surfing. And I think what we do locally is sort of a fusion of that aesthetic with the Southern, just the wholesome Southern uh, gentlemanly vibe that many of us grew up with. Personal hero of mine, Mr. Robin Kegel. This is a hurricane of a human on land and an absolute uh, virtuoso in the water. He spends half of his time living out the back of his short bus, shredding amazing breaks all over the world, and dating model chicks. Pretty cool. <laughs> so, personal hero for sure. And ultimately, the, the finish, uh, concluding an amazing session. This is a gentleman, Nathan Adams, who has honed his skill in the water, has his own pro model with almond surfboards, their aesthetics off the charts. But just notice the, the beauty of nature surrounding the activity. Surfing's the only art form that takes place in an ever-changing medium. The palette is constantly different, never the same twice. Here we are in our, inside our shop. As you can see, it's not the typical surf shop. Um, we've got a beautiful Gato Heroi surfboard there on the ceiling, and that sofa, empty, is inviting. We, we encourage you to come hang out. The relationships and friendships that we forge through our shop is what brings me the most joy in life. And again, just another, uh, this is from a postcard we put out earlier this year. We've never paid for marketing or advertising. Um, we just hope people dig what we're doing and tell their friends to come check this crazy thing out. So if you're on Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff, check us out and come see us. <laughs>